Hello? Is anybody here? Wow, you look like Albert Einstein. I am Professor Einbach, the director of this laboratory, not Einstein. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I guess you must get a lot of comments that you look like Einstein. I do, but I assure you, I'm not Einstein. I'm Einbach. Right, well, I'm Tom Scout's fiancé. He's a researcher here, and I haven't been able to find him for a few days. Tom? Right. He's my assistant. Well, I haven't heard from him in three days. He's not answering his phone, and I thought he might be here working hard to meet some crazy deadline. That's right. Tom's very busy. Mmm, you smell like lilies of the valley. That's right. It's my perfume. Do you like it? Oh, how I love that smell. My head is spinning. Oh, I feel sick. Professor, what happened? He must have passed out. I'm sorry. The smell reminded me of my favorite photo of my wife. I've kept it on my desk for more than 20 years, but it recently went missing. She was holding a bouquet of lilies of the valley in the photo. I guess the smell caused me to pass out. I understand. Some things like that happen. Now, I'd like to talk about Tom. Ah, right. Tom. Uh, Tom flew to a conference. I think he's either in Tokyo or Amsterdam. I can't remember. He should be back in about a week. Amsterdam? What are you talking about? We're getting married in two days. Married? Hmm. I guess you'll have to postpone the wedding then. Are you kidding? I demand you take me to his desk right now. Sorry, but only employees have access to the laboratory. It's strictly forbidden for you to enter. Besides, Tom's not in there. You're clearly hiding something, Professor. Well, don't worry. He'll be back. I, on the other hand, have been without my wife for 30 years, and she's not coming back. The missing photo of my wife. Good heavens, someone hung it behind the clock. Hey, let me have it. Give it to me. I'll let you have the photo after you let me inside the lab. Fine, here's my access card. But I'm telling you, Tom isn't in there. Now give me the photo. Oh, Gretchen, my beloved Gretchen.
Hey, this is Tom's mobile phone. Hmm, now let's see. Last number dialed, 3008 AD. 3008 AD? What a strange contact. It must be a club or something. Don't touch that telephone. But this is Tom's telephone. So you'd better just explain this 3008 contact. Do you know anything about it? Yes, but don't even think about dialing that number. And why not? Because that telephone is a time machine. You'll get transported to a different time. Professor, you're clearly still suffering from your little fainting episode. I need to find my fiancé. Give me that phone. I'm dialing. Connecting to 3008 AD. Don't do it! I beg you! My goodness, what's that? I am not a what, but a who. I am Universal Robot UM21. Excuse me, but what year is this? Well, it's 3008, of course. You're joking. I'm a robot. Robots aren't programmed to make jokes. Ah, ah, ah. Are you trying to tell me it's 3008? And what year do you think it is? 2008? Ah, ah, ah. This is how I laugh. This is how I laugh. Oh, no. This is how I laugh. Oh, no. I'm malfunctioning. I need to be rebooted. Just great. And what am I supposed to do? I guess I should try to resurrect this chunk of metal.
Thank you for rebooting me. I've been malfunctioning a lot lately. Maybe they should just melt me down. Ah, ah, ah. So I guess the professor was telling the truth. The telephone really is a time machine. That's amazing. Hey, robot. Yes? I'm looking for a man named Tom Scout. Tom Scout. Tom Scout. Tom Scout. Yes, I know one. Not far from here on the other side of the fence, but I can't get in there because I lost the key to the gate. Well, then let's look for the key. Good heavens, this is a cemetery. Yes, and I am a cemetery robot, UM-21. I keep the cemetery clean and perform maintenance. So where can I find Tom Scout? His grave is somewhere over here. Grave? You mean he's dead? This is a cemetery. Everyone here is dead. Except me, of course. I'm a robot. Ah, ah, ah. What an interesting development this is. Take me to his grave. Hey, someone has taken all the nameplates from the graves. Everything has been completely messed up. Vandals, vandals, vandals. What are we going to do? We'll never be able to find Tom Scout if we don't find all of the nameplates and put them back into place. Okay, let's search together.
Okay, now everything's back in place. This is Tom Scout's grave. Tom Scout died in 2508. That was 500 years ago. His birth date isn't listed. There doesn't appear to be that much information on him. Maybe this isn't your Tom Scout. I mean, how many Tom Scouts can there have been in the world? How can we check to see if this is my Tom? We can take a look at his pre-death hologram. Hologram? Yes. His grave has been equipped with a pre-death hologram. People record some parting words in a digital epitaph while they are still alive so their friends and family can view them when they visit their graves. But I can't turn this one on. I think it is broken. Let me have a look. Here's the hologram box. Excellent. Now we can view Tom's hologram. Hi, Vera. It's me, Tom. Listen, I understand that you are probably a bit surprised about all of this, but there's nothing to worry about. My mobile phone is a time machine. I'm sure Professor Einbach explained it to you. I knew that you would end up here and listen to this digital epitaph. Listen, I need your help. Someone took some dinosaur eggs from the Jurassic period to a different time. If these eggs are not returned back to their appropriate place and time, I will not be able to return to our proper time. I'll explain it all to you later. Right now, you've got the time machine, so you're the only person capable of finding the eggs. There are a number of different errors in the list of contacts on my phone. The eggs could be in any of these times. Just select an error in the contact list, press OK, and off you go. You should start off by visiting Nostradamus in the 16th century. He'll be waiting for you. I'm sure you'll be able to take care of all of this, and we'll see each other soon. Was that your Tom? Yes, but it's just delirious gibberish. What makes you say that? It seems quite simple. In order to see Tom, you need to find the stolen dinosaur eggs and return them to the Jurassic period. Piece of cake, right? I think it would be best to return to 2008 and get Professor Einbach to explain everything. Connecting to Laboratory 2008. Connection error. The number you are trying to reach is either switched off or outside of the coverage area. Figures. Okay, we'll follow Tom's instructions and call Nostradamus. Connecting to Nostradamus. Hello? Are you Nostradamus? Michel de Nostradame. Enchanté. My name is Vera. Very nice to meet you, Vera. You may call me Michel. Michel, I've lost my fiancé and I was told that you would be able to help me. Yes, I know. I have been waiting for you. I was asked to make an astrological reading and prepare your horoscope. Who asked you? I am not allowed to tell you. It's a professional secret. I will get my zodiac symbols and then we can begin. Are you in a hurry? There has been a small complication. What happened? You see, on Fridays, I normally talk with ghosts and spirits of famous people. Yesterday, I summoned Dante Alighieri's ghost. We got into an argument and he got so mad he threw a fit and scattered the tools I used to make my predictions around the house. I need to collect all the zodiac signs scattered around my house before I can prepare your horoscope. Well, let me help you. It will speed things up. That is very kind of you.
Uh, thank you. Now I can prepare your horoscope. Now, solve this problem while I make contact with the cosmic spirits and predict your future. Excellent! Everything is aligned, and now I will see a vision. What a strange vision. What is it? Vera, I had a vision that you will be my wife in a year's time, and my current wife will become very weak. What do you think? It can't be. I already have a fiancé. I guess it was a bad vision. It happens from time to time. I'm sorry, but you have to solve the puzzle once again.
Your fiancé is under the power of evil spirits. I saw a huge lizard in a primeval forest. However, the lizard may be able to help you. You need to go to this lizard. You know where it is, don't you? I can guess. It's probably under Jurassic period in my address book. But first, I must give you a magical elixir. It will come in very handy. And just what is this elixir? It is the elixir of understanding. It will allow you to understand and communicate in any language. And not only human languages, but you'll be able to understand various creatures as well. But in order for it to work, you will need to prepare it yourself. I'll tell you which ingredients and tools you need to prepare it. Okay, let's start. Excellent! Take the elixir. Just remember that you need to give this elixir to the person or creature you want to understand. You don't need to drink it yourself. Okay, I'll try not to forget. I have to go. I have an audience with the king. Good luck finding your fiancé. Thank you. This is all very weird. Okay, now let's see if we can get to the Jurassic period. Connecting to Jurassic period.
I guess traveling through time isn't that scary after all. And wow, look at this prehistoric forest. How interesting. Now what am I going to do? Rawr. Oh no, it's growling at me. Rawr. I have the magical elixir. Now I just need to make him drink it. That is, of course, if Nostradamus didn't trick me. Rawr, rawr. Now how am I going to get him to drink it? Thank you for the fruit, but my teeth hurt, and I can't eat anymore. Wow, a talking dinosaur. It really works. And why do you think I was silent before? Ah, sorry. I guess I just didn't understand you. Now you said that your teeth are bothering you? Yes, it's horribly painful. I can't sleep, and this is already the third day that I haven't been able to eat anything. Why don't you let me look at your teeth? Please, open your mouth. Why? Maybe I can help stop the pain. All right. Just don't bite my head off, okay? Rawr. Hmm, yes. You've got a lot of tooth decay here. What's tooth decay? It means your teeth are slowly being eaten away by bacteria. Your teeth decay when you don't brush your teeth and because you eat everything around you. Now, let's see if I can help you. Okay.
Hey, it doesn't hurt anymore. What did you do? I had to pull two of your teeth out. It shouldn't hurt anymore. You are very brave. You're not at all afraid that I might eat you? No, not one bit. That's great. You're not like everyone else. Usually, as soon as I enter the forest, everyone starts running away because they are afraid of me. That doesn't sound like too much fun, Dino. Well, if you eat everything you see, you'll never be able to make any friends. And besides, your teeth hurt because you're eating all the time. Well, what should I eat if I want to prevent my teeth from hurting? Well, for a start, you could stop eating other animals. That would probably help. Let me show you. So, you mean if it grows in the ground, I can eat it, but if it runs, flies, or jumps, I shouldn't touch it, right? Exactly. Okay. Now take for example an egg. It's not flying yet, but it will soon. Can I eat it? Yes, I wanted to talk to you about eggs. My name is Vera, and I'm investigating the theft of a few eggs from this forest. In fact, According to my information, they were taken from your nest. So tell me, are all your eggs in order? Well, they should be. Oh no! My nest is empty. They must have fallen out. I need to find them and put them back. Quick, let's find them. I'm still missing three eggs. Now where could they have gone? I remember now. Not too long ago, there was a creature. Looked a lot like you, actually. It asked for three eggs, and I handed them over. To a person? Did it look sort of like me? Yes, I guess. It stood on two legs, and it didn't have a tail. And why did you give him the eggs? He said he wanted to change the future, but I don't really understand what he meant. It's very important that these eggs are returned. What did this creature look like? He gave me, oh, what did he call it? Oh, yeah, a photo. Only I chewed it up. I thought it might help with my toothache. 
Is anything left? Just these pieces. Let me have a look. Good heavens, it's Tom. None of this makes any sense. Do you know this creature? Yes, it's my fiancé. We're going to get married in two days, and now it looks like he took the eggs. What does fiancé mean? He's the male I plan to nest with. Really? It's a good thing I didn't eat him. He was actually rather rude. Where did he go? He just went into the bushes and disappeared. Just great. Now how am I going to find him? He said something about the Stone Age, so you can probably find one of the eggs there. But I've never heard of that part of the forest, Stone Age. It might be really far from here. Stone Age? Yes, there's a contact entry in the phone. What's a phone? A phone is a time machine. Aha! Uh -huh. I have to find Tom and your eggs. I hope I'll be back soon. Okay. Bye, Vera. Good luck. And don't eat anyone. You just might make a few friends by the time I get back. Okay. I won't. Connecting to Stone Age. Wow, you're really hairy. Hello there, my hairy friend. <laughs> he doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> hmm, maybe I should show him a photo of Tom. <laughs> Looks like he knows Tom, so I better talk to him. Nostradamus's elixir of understanding should do the trick. Oh, great spirit, 
Who are you and why have you come? I came to talk with you, but why do you think I'm a great spirit? You showed me the picture of the great spirit, Tom. So I figured that you too must be a great spirit. Okay, I get it. Tom is a great spirit. And what did this great spirit Tom do when he was here? He gave me a giant egg. I need to take care of and raise the animal when it hatches, and then I too will be a great spirit. Really? Could you please show me this egg? The great spirit Tom told me not to show this egg to anyone. What's your name? My name is Ugu. Nice to meet you, Ugu. My name's Vera. Ugu, you speak the truth. I am also a great spirit, the great spirit Vera. And the great spirit Tom is my husband. We're all great spirits. It runs in the family. So, please show me this egg. I may live in a cave, but you can't fool me. The great spirit Tom could make fire. So, if you can make a fire, then I'll believe that you're a great spirit. Hmm. Do you have any matches? What are matches? They're small sticks that great spirits use to make fire. The great spirit Tom didn't use matches. Okay then, I'll give it a try. For starters, I'll need to collect some wood. Okay, I've got the firewood. Now I just need to make some fire. One can make fire using friction, focusing the sun with the lens, or by striking flint to make it spark. Ugu, please don't disturb me. Okay.
There's a fire for you, Ugo. Now, may I please have that egg? Yes, I see that you are indeed a great spirit. Here, take the egg. And since you are a great spirit, the great spirit Tom gave me this puzzle to test you. He said that only another great spirit would be able to solve it. The puzzle is called Evolution. Evolution? That's an odd name. Okay, I'll try. There are pictures which need to be in order. The great spirit Tom said anyone who can solve it will know what to do next. What the heck is this? It doesn't make any sense. What sort of weird evolution is this that ends with a mushroom? By the way, the Great Spirit Tom didn't mention where he was going, did he? The Great Spirit Tom mentioned something about going to ancient Greece. Whatever that means. Ah, yes, Socrates. He's here in the contact list. I'll try that. Vera! Will I someday become a great spirit like you and Tom? Of course you will, Ugo, as soon as you learn to make fire yourself. Well, it's time for me to go. It was nice meeting you. Goodbye, great spirit Vera. Connecting to Socrates. Hello? Are you Socrates? Woman, what are you doing here? I'm not dressed. Oh, sorry. I guess I caught you at a bad time. I seem to have misplaced my tunic. I can't go into the street like this. So where could your tunic be? Oh, it could be anywhere. My students were here yesterday. We discussed the essence of being. Oh, the discussion was so heated and animated that I, I can't find anything today. Well, wrap yourself with the curtain for now.
Here's your tunic. Thanks. I'll go get dressed. Thank you for finding my tunic. You're Socrates, the famous philosopher, right? That's right. And you must be my new masseuse, right? Well, not exactly, but I know how to give massages. My name is Vera, and I have a few questions for you. But what about my massage? I'll give you a massage after you answer my questions. Okay, I'm listening. Do you know anything about a dinosaur egg or a person named Tom? Ah, uh, yes. Tom the Traveling Philosopher. He was here. He left me a huge egg and asked me to take care of whatever hatches from it. Why? He said that it is a way to change the course of history. I can't say I really understood what he was talking about. In general, Tom was a very strange guy. So where is this egg? Do you still have it? You know, a lot of people go in and out of my house, uh, students, philosophers. Could it have rolled somewhere? Or, or maybe someone boiled it and ate it? Socrates, it's really important that we find this egg. It's already after 12. This is when I normally had my massage. Okay, lie on your stomach and I'll give you a massage. On my stomach? Yes, on your stomach. Just relax. There's nothing to worry about. Take a deep breath. Mm. 
just relax. There's nothing to worry about. Take a deep breath. Just relax. There's nothing to worry about. Take a deep breath. Just relax. I think he fell asleep. Now I can look for the dinosaur egg. I guess I should take the painting with me. It's clearly not from this time. Look at this. There's some sort of inscription on the back of this. Only all the letters are scrambled. Let's see if I can decode it.
Happy birthday. Love your pussycat. Good grief. It looks like Professor Einbach had the painting and it came here from our time. Let's try to get back to 2008. Connecting to Laboratory 2008. is it? Hi, Professor. You've got a lot of explaining to do. Vera, thank heavens you're back. Yes, I'm back. And I have a number of questions for you. Vera, there's no time for questions. All of my experimental mice have escaped. If they chew on the cables, they'll cut the power to the lab and something horrible will happen. Worse than horrible. What will happen? The collapse of time and space. Relax, Professor. Mice are not a problem. We'll find all the mice. But then we're going to have a serious conversation. Okay, Professor. I caught all the mice. Oh, thank you, Vera. Now tell me, are you okay? Absolutely not. My wedding is in two days, my fiancé stole some dinosaur eggs from the Jurassic period, and now I've got to travel to different times in history with the use of a mobile phone to find these eggs. I'm definitely not okay. Perhaps you could explain this to me. Well, I don't understand it myself. Tom and I built a time machine. We had to test it, so Tom went to the future and disappeared. And then the phone came back here by itself. And then you showed up here looking for Tom, took the time machine, and disappeared. That's all I know. And what time did Tom go to the first time? One hundred million years into the future. Good heavens! Why did he go that far into the future? He needed to find out what the atmosphere consisted of 100 million years from now for his dissertation. You scientists are crazy. By the way, does this look familiar? Hey, the death of Socrates. It's your painting? My wife gave it to me for my 40th birthday. Oh, my Gretchen. Oh, my head is spinning. I need my pills. What pills? Where are they? They are for my condition. I'm losing consciousness. Ugh. Great. I need this like I need a hole in my head. Einbach, it looks like he passed out.
thank you, Vera. The pills helped me forget about my wife. What happened to her? She loved canoeing, and then one fine day she paddled off and never came back. And every time I think about her, I pass out. You know, Professor, I don't know if Tom told you, but I'm a professional psychoanalyst and I think I can help you. Really? How? It looks like you're being tormented by acute autophobia, the fear of being left alone. You need to get over this. Yes, but everyone experiences loneliness. True, but not everyone passes out as a result. Now look deeply into my eyes and relax. I will hypnotize you and make everything better. I'm not dead, dear. I'm alive and I'll return to you soon. She's alive. Now that's an interesting development. Well, while I'm here, I might as well get rid of some of the junk here.
I saw my wife, and she told me that she's still alive and would be coming back to me. Okay, now how do you feel? Much better, thank you. And now I have hope. You're welcome. I'm happy to help you. Now, I'm going to go a hundred million years into the future to see if I can find out what happened to Tom. I'm going with you. It's all my fault. After all, I designed this damn machine. Can the time machine transport two people? Grab my hand and hold on tight. That way, the time machine will identify us as one object. Okay, I'm dialing. Connecting to 100 million, 2008 AD. Look, Vera, this is the Mushroom Age. This is magnificent, amazing. In 100 million years, the Earth will be ruled by mushrooms. That's great news and all, but I'm more interested in finding out where Tom is. Look, a path. I don't believe it. This is a great scientific discovery. We'll have to re-examine evolution. Careful, Professor. There are footprints here. I can see that. They look like our footprints. Yes, but look. These are Tom's footprints. They're everywhere, even on the mushrooms. And how do you know that they are Tom's footprints? Look at the logo on that tread. Tom always wears Nebo shoe sneakers. And I really doubt the local population here would be wearing them. Thank you. 
Clearly, Tom walked around here a lot. It's almost as if he was looking for something. And then something strange and unexpected happened. Do you get the feeling you're breathing something odd? My head is spinning and I want to sleep. It probably has to do with the makeup of the atmosphere here. It's not what we're used to. Okay, just don't pass out. Look! Professor Einbach, do you see those symbols? What symbols? And they are even bigger in this clearing. There are letters visible on the mushrooms. Fascinating. It looks like something interesting is happening. But I'm also feeling really sleepy now. I'm relieved that it's not just me, but I'm dangerously close to falling asleep. Maybe we should paint each other. Let's figure out what these symbols mean instead.
what can you tell me about that huge egg you discovered? I know who laid it. It's a dinosaur egg that was taken from the Jurassic period. It's imperative that we return this egg. My head is spinning even more. Now what can you tell me about all the letters? Well, there are both upper and lower case letters. I think if we write them down on a piece of paper, we might have something to work with. Perhaps it's some sort of code. Okay, let's sit down and try. It's a message from Tom. Beware of the hypnotic powers here. Hmm, what could it mean? It means you need to be very careful. Professor Einbach, are you okay? I'm not Professor Einbach. I'm just using his body. Who are you? I live here. I'm looking for Tom Scout. Do you know where he is? Stop searching for Tom. But we're getting married in two days. The wedding will take place on time. Just go home and wait. Tom will return to you in one piece. And why should I trust you? Because if you don't listen to me, not only won't there be a wedding, but I'll kill you, Tom, and this clown I'm using to talk to you. Professor Einbach's a genius, so don't be mean to him. I'll give you 30 seconds to get out of here. The clock is ticking. But who are you and what do you want? Vera, what just happened? 
Looks like we have to get out of here, and right now. Was someone controlling me? What did I do? I will tell you later. Give me your hand. Connecting to Laboratory 2008. What happened, Vera? There's a big and powerful hypnotic field in the Mushroom Age. You were hypnotized. Tom probably was too. But who was doing the hypnotizing? We still need to figure that out. Oh God! What was that? The power's out! If the lab runs out of power, we're in real trouble! The emergency backup power supply will only last 15 minutes. What sort of trouble are you talking about? There will be time holes in space and space holes in time. We need to get into the lab and restore the power. Okay, calm down. I have a flashlight. But you just can't open the door. The emergency lock has been activated. We need to find three emergency access cards to unlock it. Do you hear footsteps? Yes, but where are they coming from? Dino, how did you get in here? Vera, I don't know. I was grazing in the forest when all of a sudden, poof, I appeared here, in the dark. Where am I? Wow, a talking dinosaur? What a strange mollusk. Dinosaurs aren't supposed to talk. After all, they have such tiny brains. Vera, is he making fun of me? How about I just bite his head off? Guys, quiet. Everyone just shut up for a second. We'll discuss this later, but first, we need to restore the power. Professor, what do we need to do? You need to find replacement fuses and put them in the fuse box. Out of the way, everyone. I'm going to restore the power. Okay, the power's back on. Good heavens! Someone took the time machine apart. What are you talking about? The mobile phone is the time machine and I have it right here in my pocket. Missed calls, messages, zero. The mobile phone is just a remote control. The time machine was over there in the corner. Without the time machine, that mobile phone is useless. If we collect all the parts, do you think we can put it back together? We'll have to try. Okay, 
Let's start looking for all the parts. Okay, what am I looking for? Dino, why don't you just step aside and let us take care of this, okay? Okay. Okay, I think we have everything. Now we just need to put it back together. I want to help. Dino, we're almost finished. But I'm bored and I want to run and jump. Listen, if we don't fix this time machine right now, you'll be taken off to the zoo and put in a cage and be fed mice for the rest of your life. In that case, I guess I'll let you finish. Thank you. Now let's get to work. It looks like the time machine is functioning properly. And I guess there was some sort of time quake when the machine broke. What? It appears that things and beings were shuffled to a different time. This jumble probably took place in the times and places where you went using the telephone. And Dino appeared here in 2008 as a result of this time quake? Yes, that's my theory. Dino, come here. I stepped on some sort of thingamajig, and it shocked me. I wanted to crush it, but it shocked me again. Can you show me what you stepped on? This thing. Oh, I know what that is. It's a device that displays holograms. We'll need to reconnect the wires to turn it on. Let's see what's recorded on it. Hello, friends. Good heavens, it's Tom. Only he's transparent. I'm the one who dismantled the time machine. And don't even think about repairing it. If you've already fixed it, disable it immediately. Oh no, what is he talking about? 
I must admit that I don't entirely understand what I've been doing and saying lately. And I can't explain what has happened to me. But it's not my fault. And most importantly, Vera, remember, they don't know how to make omelets in the Jurassic period. Have a nice day. Good heavens, Tom has lost his mind. More like he's lost control of his mind. I bet he's being manipulated, and I bet he's under the power of whatever hypnotized you in the Mushroom Age. What did he mean when he said, they don't know how to make omelets in the Jurassic period? I guess he wanted to tell me to return Dino and his eggs back to the Jurassic period. Maybe I'll find an answer there. I'll go with you. No, I'd rather have you here taking care of the time machine. I don't want anyone else to disable it again. Okay, but Vera, please be careful. Dino, give me your hand. It's time to fly home. Home, yeah! Connecting to Jurassic period. Michelle, what are you doing here? How did you get here? Vera, I am horrified. Where am I? You're in the past, about 200 million years BC. It's called the Jurassic Period. Hi, my name is Dino. Ah, what a horrible talking lizard. This always happens. People are always afraid of me. Maybe I should start eating meat again. Dino, don't frighten the man. Don't be frightened, Michelle. Dino won't hurt you. He's a good dinosaur. Now tell me, how did you get here? I was sitting in my office putting together my astrological forecasts for the French king. And then, all of a sudden, I found myself in this horrible forest. I'm really confused, and I've lost the ability to predict the future. Relax, Michelle. You've fallen into a time quake, and you're in shock. Just relax and we'll help you regain your senses. We just need to put everything back into order. And just how will you do that? Okay, let me explain it to you. Okay, how do you feel now? Yes, I guess everything's in order, and I can predict the future again. Let's see. Great! Now I'll take you back home. Wait a minute. Let's perform an astrological reading so that I can understand uh, what we should do next. But it is so difficult to perform an astrological reading under these conditions. The wind has scattered my zodiac symbols. Your symbols again? Can't we just get you some new symbols when we get you back home? No, this is a special and unique collection. 
I, I won't leave without them. Hey, Nostradamus, great idea. You can stay and we can make astrological predictions together. No, I can't leave him here. Okay, Michelle, let's find your symbols. I found some strange symbols. These don't look like constellations. I dreamed about those symbols on the night of the summer solstice. I call them the Nostradamus Extended Zodiac. And what makes your extended zodiac better than the normal one? I can make predictions thousands of years in the future. Not now. We need to get back to the future. Wait. The future isn't going anywhere, and a good prediction never hurt anything. Now, can you solve this puzzle? Why is it that I have to solve a puzzle every time you make a prediction? It's an ancient way of making predictions. Uh, don't you like puzzles? I saw it, I saw it. What did you see? That peace and love ruled the earth. There was no anger, no hunger, no war. All the people were like brothers. They walked together in happiness, in warm, bright meadows. It all happens in about 10,000 years. That's great, but what does this have to do with me? Oh, sorry. It was a digressive vision. It happens sometimes. We'll need to make another prediction. I guess the puzzle was too easy, eh? So this one, in the next reading, is guaranteed to be successful. Yes, 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 I see it. What? I see a wedding, your wedding. Guests, eating, drinking, and dancing. But then a big flying saucer descends from the sky. A woman with blonde hair and an extraterrestrial step out of the flying saucer. The extraterrestrial waves for everyone to join it, and all of the guests climb on board. And then it flies away, leaving only the woman with the blonde hair. 
And what does that mean? Uh, it's difficult to say, but you should be prepared for the unexpected at your wedding. Just great. Is that everything? That's it. We can go home now. Okay, come here and give me your hand. Are you leaving now? It's time for us to go. Bye, Dino. Take care and have a good journey. Connecting to Nostradamus. Vera, I didn't know that you were an enchantress. Who trained you? Well, I study with lots of people. Wow, it's hard to believe I'm home. Look around your office to make sure that everything's in order. It's possible that things from different periods might have ended up here. Okay, let's check everything.
Hey, that box was not here. It's a hologram box. Holo, what? Here, let me show you. Tom was probably here and left it for me. He talks to me using these boxes. Hi, Vera. I'm sorry that I have to use one of these devices to talk to you. You're doing a great job. Everything that isn't in the correct time needs to be returned to its proper time. Now go to the cemetery in 3008. I'll wait there for you. And uh, what does that mean? It means that I need to go. Tom is waiting for me in 3008. Bye, Michelle. Connecting to 3008 AD. Low battery. Oh no! What happened? My battery died. Who died? My time machine is broken, and now I'm stuck in the 16th century. Oh, no problem, Vera. People live in the 16th century. I have a room with windows that face the garden for you. With your abilities and my talent, we'll be the greatest magicians of all time. I would be happy to stay with you, but I really need to get to 3008. 
Michelle, has electricity been invented yet? Electricity? It's the first I've heard of it. Okay, don't worry about it. I'll try to think of something. It's Leonardo da Vinci. I've got it. We need to summon the spirit of Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci? That's right. He died about 40 years ago, but I bet his spirit can help us. I think it would be better to summon Edison's spirit so he could make a battery charger for the telephone. Who is Edison? He hasn't been born yet. Never mind. Just call Da Vinci's spirit. Uh, to summon his spirit, I'll use these magical cards. I'll arrange a pattern with cards, and you'll have to remove the cards by matching pairs. Let's go to my card table. Hi, Leo. Hello. So, guys, what can I do for you? This woman needs to get to the year 3008, but her time machine broke down. Well, you have to build a new one. Yeah, but how? Here is a schematic diagram. I sketched this about 70 years ago, but then invented the helicopter. So I had to postpone work on the time machine. The plans are encrypted, so you'll need to crack the code. Once you've figured out the code, it shouldn't be too difficult for you. Thanks, Leo. Thank you.
Not a problem. Well, wasn't he nice? Let's decode these plans and build the time machine. Was that really Leonardo da Vinci's spirit? Well, who else could it have been? Leonardo always gets right to the point. Now, let's break this code so we can send you on your way. Excellent. All we have to do now is put it together. between a toilet and a helicopter. Yes, it was sort of a transition for him. He had just invented the toilets and hadn't yet invented the helicopter. Thank you, Michelle. I'm off. Tom is waiting for me. Good luck, Vera, and take care. Who knows? Maybe we will see each other again. After all, it is a small world. Good heavens, I'm in space. Hello. Hello, Vera. Who just said that? I have many names. You can call me the Omniscient One. Okay, Omniscient One. Where are you? I am everywhere and nowhere. I don't have a visible body. How do you know my name? I know everything. Do you know how I got here? Of course. I was on my way to 3008. I know. Leonardo da Vinci never got a chance to test his plans. His machine malfunctioned and produced a system error. So what year is it? This place is not within the confines of time. You know, Omniscient One, I really need to get to 3008. Do you think you could help me? Sure, but let's play a game first. What game? I call it Heavenly Pinball. If you win three times, I'll help you. Okay, let's play.
did you think of the game? It was pretty amusing. Omniscient one, you said you know everything, right? Of course, I know everything. So what happened to Tom, my fiancé? I can't tell you. Why? Well, imagine that you are a ball in Heavenly Pinball. You bounce off one bumper into another one and eventually reach your goal. But if you change anything, even by just a millimeter, the entire situation changes and your life could take an entirely different path. What are you trying to tell me? That I'm not going to interfere. Let's play again. You're good at this game, Vera. It's fun to play with you. Omniscient one, in addition to knowing everything, you're probably almighty too, right? Of course, I can do anything. Then could you please return Tom, my fiancé, to 2008? Our wedding is just around the corner. You know, I've been practicing transcendental meditation lately. I've been trying to feel like I don't exist. And besides, I can't interfere. It disturbs everything. And you're not bored here? Outside of time, knowing everything, trying to feel like you don't exist? Well, of course, I'm bored at times, but then I just tell myself not to be bored. I try to feel empty like I don't exist. Boredom doesn't exist in the void. Well, I probably shouldn't be giving you advice, but perhaps you should try a more active lifestyle. You think so? Yes, I think you should go for a walk, talk to people, and get involved. Hmm, that's an interesting thought. Let's play again.
You know, Vera, I'm afraid if I start getting more involved and start talking with everyone, then I won't be the omniscient one anymore. And where did you get this idea that you're the omniscient one? Hmm. Well, if I'm not the omniscient one, then who is? Maybe Leonardo da Vinci? Who, by the way, promised to send me to 3008. Right. You know, Vera, you're an interesting person. Why don't you take my number? You know, just in case you want to call. The battery in my mobile phone died. I've already charged it for you. How? Don't forget, I'm almighty. Okay, what's your number? Ten billion. New contact. The omniscient one. Okay, I've got it. Thanks for all your help. It's time for me to go now. I'm always here. Give me a call if you need anything. Connecting to 3008 AD. Okay, something here has definitely changed. Nobody's here, and of course, the gate is locked. I'll have to try to find the key. Great spirit, Vera! And now you're here! Hi, Ugu. How are you doing? I'm having a weird dream. Why do you think it's a dream? I fell asleep in my cave and I started dreaming. It's either that or I've gone totally crazy. You're just in a different time. By the way, have you seen the great spirit, Tom? Yes, he's also here, but he's not a great spirit anymore. What happened to him? Where is he? I'll take you to him. Here he is, only he doesn't know anything. Tom, at last, let me hug you. Hey, lady, what are you doing? Tom, what's the matter? Why did you just call me lady? Don't you remember me? Why did you kiss me? Tom, stop kidding around. It's me, Vera, your fiancé. But I'm too young to get married. He thinks he is ten years old. Tom, how old are you? Ten. Good grief. Tom, how did you get here? I don't remember. I want to go home. Where my mommy? Take me to my mommy. Calm down. I'll take you to your mother. Just please don't cry. Now, now, you just need to take a nap. I'll count to three and you just calm down. Focus on that building over there. It will slowly begin to change and you will fall asleep. One, two, three.
Excellent. I'm deeply immersed inside Tom's psyche, and I appear to have found his childhood. Only he isn't here. I'll need to call him somehow. Now, how am I going to do it?
Why are you playing on my drums? Tom, what happened to you? I have been hypnotized so that I can't remember anything that happened in my life after I turned 10. Who hypnotized you? I don't remember. Is there any way to break the hypnosis? Yes. I'll be an adult again after you give me something that I didn't have during my childhood. And what would that be? If I knew that, I would have broken the hypnosis already. And basically, I had everything a child could ever want when I was growing up. It's time for me to go. Tom, wait. Don't go. I have to go or my mom will be mad at me. Okay, fine. Okay. In order to figure out what he didn't have growing up, perhaps we should look at what he actually did have during his childhood. Let's see what we have here. Okay, guys, it's time for us to go. Tom, we'll take you back to the lab where you can spend some time with Professor Einbach. And Ugu, I'll take you back to your cave. Okay, lady, whatever you say. No! I'm never going to leave this place! Why? 
Tom broke my sacred fang necklace. No, I didn't. He broke it himself. And he hid all the fangs so I couldn't find them. The spirits will be angry with me if I return home without it. Tattletale. Tom, why did you break Ugu's necklace? I won't do it again, but Ugu's a tattletale. Okay, we'll fix Ugu's necklace, then we'll leave. Tom, where did you hide the fangs? My necklace! Thank you! Now the spirits will look on us favorably. I want my mommy. I want to go home to my cave! Okay guys, both of you take my hands. Connecting to Laboratory 2008. So, he lapsed into his childhood? Tom, do you like milkshakes? I love to play computer games. Well, I hope you two find a common language. Tom, I'll be right back, okay? Don't worry, Vera. I'll look after him. Ugu, give me your hand. It's time to go home. Connecting to Stone Age. Socrates, you also ended up in a different time. I don't know where I am, but I think I'm going crazy. Why? Are you familiar with my philosophy? The basics, sure. Everyone sits in a cave with their backs to the entrance. Real life is happening outside the cave, and they observe the reflections cast on the cave wall. A game of shadows. 
but they think that this game of shadows is real life. Okay, now why are you losing your mind? Do you see the shadows on the wall? No. Well, I see them. Well, step aside and let me look. Yes, I can see something. But don't worry, they're just mental projections from your mind. We'll collect them now and everything will be okay. So, is the cave wall all clean? Absolutely clean. How did you manage to clean it? You know, Socrates. You need to eat more fruit and swim in the sea. And then you'll never go crazy again. It's pure genius. Swimming in fruit. I like that philosophy. Is it possible to reach an absolute truth using swimming in fruit? Huh? Every philosophical system must come to an absolute truth. If you can reach the absolute truth using swimming in fruit, then I swear to Zeus, I'll get up every morning and swim and eat fruit. I'll try. You are a real philosopher. I am absolutely sure that you will be absolutely fine if you don't try to make absolute truth your absolute goal or make another absolute out of an absolute truth. Because making an absolute out of an absolute is absolutely ridiculous, you know. Really? Absolutely. What was that? Let's go look. This strange guy just fell out of the sky. Greetings, Earthlings. Hello, who are you? 
I have come from the center of the galaxy. I need to take an intelligent being from this planet back with me. What for? We will study him in our pan-galactic laboratory. Mr. Alien, um, sir, unfortunately, we're rather busy now and we can't help you. Then I'll just write that there is no intelligent life on this planet in my report. That's okay with us. And because this planet doesn't have intelligent life, it will be destroyed in accordance with pangalactic law. You don't happen to have a pen, do you? I'm afraid we can't let you do that. Ask him if he wants to get hit upside the head with a stone axe. Calm down, Ugo. Say, do you need really intelligent life? Or will sort of average intelligence do? Well, at the very least, it has to be able to crawl. Okay, everyone. Let's help the alien. Here you are, an entire collection of intelligent beings. Thank you. And by the way, you don't happen to know where I could buy a new radar? I broke mine when I landed, and I can't fly away without one. Buy a radar, huh? Well, if you landed a few hundred thousand years later, I could tell you. But currently, no one on Earth knows anything about making them. What am I going to do? Maybe we can repair yours. Is it badly broken? The parts have been scattered all over the place. Okay, guys. Let's help the alien.
Thank you. How much do I owe you? No charge. It's a gift from the inhabitants of Earth. Thank you. Well, I guess it's time for me to go. Goodbye and good luck. And make sure you give us a good report. Socrates, it's time for us to go too. Where are we going? Athens, I'm taking you home. Now give me your hand. How are we going to get there? Bye bye, Ugo. Bye, Vera. Come back and visit sometime. Connecting to Socrates. What was that? We just traveled through time. Vera, tell me the truth. You're a goddess, right? It seems to me that only gods and goddesses could do something like that. And even then, not all of them. There's a bit of God in all of us, and sometimes we're even godlike. We need to celebrate the fact that we were saved. I'll go to the market and get something very tasty. Okay. I'll look around your house. It's possible that something from another time might have appeared here.
What a nightmare! It's horrible! There's a revolution here in Athens! What? A tyrant has overthrown the People's Council and has taken power! Why aren't you wearing any clothes? A patrol undressed me. The tyrant has passed a decree stating that all citizens of Athens must walk around naked. Why? No one knows. They say he's a despot. Random searches are taking place all over town. They are burning clothes on the main square. Good heavens! And women are undressing too? Yes, and children and old people. I know that you, Vera, are no mere mortal. Perhaps you can talk with the gods and get them to do something. Okay, Socrates, calm down. The gods are very unlikely to help us, so we'll have to take this into our own hands. Do you have anyone that you trust, like maybe five people? Sure, my students. Okay, we'll need to get them here and come up with a plan. I'll need a map of Athens. Robot, how did you manage to become a tyrant? The locals have never seen a robot before, so they figured that I was sent by the gods. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, they asked me why I came, and I answered, to clean things up and maintain order. I rake up leaves, take out the garbage, I always maintain order. And then what happened? Then they asked me to bring order to Athens. That's how I became their ruler. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So why did you impose a ban on clothing? People wear clothes, and they don't keep things tidy. We robots never wear clothes, and we always keep things clean and maintain order. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Order. 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 Oh, no. I'm malfunctioning again. Order.
Thank you for rebooting me. Robot, I need your help. Of course. All robots must help people. We will travel a hundred million years into the future. There we need to neutralize a dangerous criminal with hypnotic powers. You're not afraid of being hypnotized, are you? I'm a robot, and the only thing robots are afraid of is rust. Let's catch this criminal. Excellent. Socrates, we're going to leave now. Take care. From philosopher to philosopher, Vera, let me give you a big hug. Take care of yourself and keep thinking happy thoughts. Goodbye. Don't forget to come back and visit. Connecting to 100 million, 2008 AD. Wow, look at all the mushrooms. Yes, this is the Mushroom Age. So where is this criminal that we are here to capture? I think he will show himself soon. I just hope that we'll be able to talk with him. But he might just try to hypnotize me. As soon as I feel like I'm being hypnotized, I'll tell you. Then you should look around because he should be somewhere nearby. If you see anything suspicious, stop him. Okay, and what are we going to do now? Now, we wait. When I have nothing to do, I play games. If I don't, then my logic processor breaks down and I start to malfunction. So do you want to play a game? Sure. What do you want to play? Robo checkers. And what will we play on? My face, of course. What did you think we would play on? Do you feel hypnotized yet? Not yet. Did you enjoy the game? Yeah, it's a pretty good game. Let's play another game.
Do you feel hypnotized yet? Not yet. Okay, let's play again. Oh, something's happening to me. What is it? Someone is trying to hack into my system. Relax, robots can't be hypnotized. Actually, anything can be hypnotized. Robot? I'm already not the robot, and you, Vera, will also be hypnotized. Aha, there you are. I wanted to have a word with you. I warned you not to interfere with my plans. When I finish counting to three, you will have the worst nightmare you can imagine. One. Two. Wouldn't it be better just to talk this over? Three. Oh, no. Welcome to a new reality. Ah, ah, ah. So, what do you think of my hypnotic powers? Yeah, I think they're pretty cool. I warned you not to interfere. Now, I will hypnotize you so that you think you are a small, mindless toadstool for the rest of your life. Well, first let me see who you really are. Why don't you show yourself? Why? It's my last wish before I become a toadstool. Okay. Try to find me.
I can tell, Vera, that you are a challenging opponent. But before I finish you, let me show myself and tell you my plan. That's very kind of you. First, let me get this pile of scrap metal out of the way. Allow me to start from the beginning. Ah, so you're a mushroom. Surprised? Yes, I'm a mushroom. Mushrooms are the only life forms left on Earth. It's been about 100 million years since man walked on the planet. And with only mushrooms left on the planet, evolution came to standstill. It was the dawn of the mushroom age. I grew from a genetically mutated spore, and I became more than just a mushroom. I became the Uber Mushroom. I am the only intelligent being here in the mushroom age. I can hypnotize people from a distance and read people's minds. I have an intellect 25 times more powerful than that of a human, but all the same, I'm a mushroom. Can you even imagine the life of a mushroom? Well, basically, I think I can. Mushrooms are condemned to immobility, spreading spores, and gradual decay. Well, it's something. When Tom came here in his time machine, I knew that this was my chance. I took control of his body and his invention. I figured if I could change the events that took place in past epochs, then the history of the Earth would be changed forever, and the mushroom age would never happen. That's what I thought anyway. But you, Vera, were right on Tom's heels, and you ruined my plan. But now I'm about to win. There's an event about to take place in 3008 that will change the face of the Earth forever. Yes, but then you and your super intelligence will be gone. I'm a mushroom, and I'm not happy. I will disappear in the name of a better life. Oh, give me a break. Everyone can find happiness. That's enough out of you. I'm going to turn you into a toadstool. Oh no, I'm really a toadstool. No, you're not a toadstool. Who are you? It's us, the mushrooms. Wait a second, I thought you weren't able to talk. That's a load of baloney. But the uber mushroom said that he was the only mushroom who could think. Baloney!
Robot, what happened? We are free. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. How? When the Uber mushroom stopped hypnotizing me, I took your telephone and dialed 3008 AD. Simple. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I think it's too early to celebrate. The Uber mushroom said that some sort of catastrophe would take place here in 3008. What was that? Let's go look. Greetings, Earthlings. Hello. Have you come to visit your ancestors? The cemetery is closed for inventory. No, I came to drop off this Annihilator. Annihilator? What for? The Pangalactic Tribunal passed a resolution to destroy this planet. It will be annihilated in two minutes. And why was this resolution passed? Due to the fact that an inspector of the Pangalactic Service was horribly offended during his last visit. Who offended him? Well, there was a man named Tom standing where you're standing now, and he said that the inspector had no brains. I think there must be some sort of misunderstanding. It doesn't matter now. Here's the Annihilator. Put it wherever you like. I'm off. Wait a second. I can't. I've got eight more planets on my list. Do you really think that toy could destroy Earth? Well, the Uber Mushroom did say that a catastrophe would take place in 3008. Robot, can you defuse bombs? No, but I do have a toolbox somewhere. It stopped ticking. Hooray! Oh, thank goodness. We stopped it. It started ticking again. Ah, ah, ah. We've only got one chance. Connecting to 10 billion AD. Omniscient One, are you here? Hi, Vera. And please, call me the All-Joyous One from now on. And why are you the All-Joyous One? All beings in the world are unhappy because they want something they don't have. But I have everything that I need. Therefore, I am most joyous and happy. Okay. Oh, All-Joyous One, I need your help. A horrible catastrophe took place on Earth by mistake. I know what happened. I'm still omniscient, you know. And you know, nothing happens by mistake. What do you mean, nothing happens by mistake? It's very simple. Let's play a game. It's called The Mechanism of Happiness. I think after we play, you'll understand.
Now do you understand why nothing happens by mistake? No, I still don't understand. Our actions are like a mirror. With each new action, our fate takes us to a new target. And when we don't hit all the targets, we think that it must be some sort of mistake. And? It's not a mistake. Just the actions were arranged incorrectly. Mistake or not, what difference does it make? There was a catastrophe on Earth, and I'm asking for your help. I guess you still don't understand. Let's play again. I invented this game myself. What do you think? Tell me, all joyous one, what does happiness mean to you? Happiness is coming up with different amusing jokes when I want. But saving a planet, that wouldn't make you happy? Well, that's pretty routine. I don't see much happiness in that. Are you sure that you're the all joyous one, the most happy of beings? Hmm. Well, from time to time, I think there might be someone happier than me. Like who? Lots of people. Take Leonardo da Vinci, for example. And who summoned me? Oh, Leo, hi. It's been some time since you stopped by. I've been very busy. Interesting clothes you're wearing. Are you going through some sort of transformation? Oh, sorry. I didn't have a chance to change. Hi, Leonardo. Oh, I remember you. You're the girl with the time machine. You see, there was a catastrophe on Earth and... I know, I know. That's why I'm here. I see that someone here doesn't want to help you. Leo, Vera and I were just talking about happiness. Listen here, you all-talking one. If you really want to talk, I'll bring 100 philosophers with me next time, and they'll tell you about everything. And I mean everything. No thanks, Leo. You know philosophers bore me to death. Come on, help the nice girl. Okay, fine. We'll play one last time. If she wins, I'll give her a chance to prevent what happened. And if she loses, then everything stays as it is. Great. Play, Vera. I'm sure you'll win. Okay, I'll try. This time will be more difficult than the last game we played.
You see, all mistrusting one, she won. Yeah, beginner's luck. Vera can now go back and try to prevent the catastrophe. Now I'd like to go be by myself, so I'll leave you now. Okay, I'll stop by later. And don't get upset. Take care, all joyous one. Goodbye. Leonardo, the all joyous one, said that you are happier than he. Is that true? You know, the all joyous one constantly contradicts himself. In addition to being the all joyous and most happy, he is, at the same time, the most sad. He is all knowing and almighty, and at the same time, the most unintelligent and weak. He is everything, all at the same time. And every time I visit him, he tries somehow to remake himself. No kidding! So it's really difficult to say who is happier than the other. And to be honest, I really don't care. But it's time for you to go. Good luck, Vera. Thanks, Leonardo. So where should I put this Annihilator? In the name of all beings on Earth, I wish to apologize to the Pan-Galactic Service. That's great, but the Annihilator is already on. I can't take it back now. Is there a way to disarm it? Well, actually, if you throw it in water, it won't work. Well, I've got to go. I have eight planets on my list to destroy. It now. There's a fire hydrant over there. Fire hydrant. Fire hydrant. Vera, quick, do something. Fire hydrant. I'm malfunctioning again. Phew, we took care of the bomb. Robot, can you hear me? It looks like I need to reboot the robot.
Thank you, Vera. I'm malfunctioning more and more lately. I think it's time I had a tune-up. But when did you start malfunctioning? A long time ago, after I was dropped from the third floor and shipped from the factory. How about I take a peek inside? Perhaps there's just a loose wire or a short circuit or something. Be my guest. It looks like your motherboard has been broken into little pieces. I'm amazed you're functioning at all. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I had no idea. I'll try to fix you now. Thanks, Vera. You're welcome. And now it's time for me to go. You're the best robot of all time. Goodbye, Vera. Be sure to come back again. I hope I won't have to. Connecting to Laboratory 2008. You. Auntie Vera, Grandpa Einbach won't let me play on the computer. Computer games are bad for kids. But I'm already 10 years old. I'm a big boy. Don't you remember? In order to break the hypnosis, you need to give Tom something that he didn't have during his childhood. Perhaps he didn't play any computer games? I never thought of that. Let's try. My niece gave me a disc with computer games. I just never used it.
Look, Tom, we're going to play a computer game now. Hooray! What do I have to do? I'll show you. So, Tom, what do you think? What an amazing game. It's great. Okay, now, Tom, how old are you? When I grow up, I'm going to make computer games. Okay, I guess it didn't work. He's still hypnotized. He still thinks he's little. Who are you calling little? I'm in the fourth grade already. I think we're going to have to find out how to break the hypnosis from the person who did this to him. Are you planning on going back to the mushroom age? Yeah, I think it's the only way we'll be able to figure this out. You're crazy. You'll be hypnotized. I don't have a choice, Professor. Tom and I are getting married in two days, and he thinks he's only ten years old. Maybe he'll just snap out of it. Perhaps. But in ten years, he'll be twenty. And I could consider marrying him then, but this is totally unacceptable to me. I have a plan. The Uber Mushroom is mad and evil because he's lonely. He thinks he's the only intelligent being on the planet in the Mushroom Age. But when I was a toadstool, 
You were a toadstool? For a short time. It's a long story. Anyway, all the mushrooms in the mushroom age spoke with me. We just need to help the uber mushroom understand their language. Well, how are you going to do that? I have an idea, but I'll need to go back to the 16th century. Keep an eye on Tom for me, okay? Be careful, Vera. Auntie Vera, please come back. You're lots of fun. Don't worry. I'll be right back. Connecting to Nostradamus. Hi, Michelle. Vera, good to see you again. How are you doing? Did you find your fiancé? Yes, I found him. But unfortunately, he's seriously ill and I need your help. I am not a doctor, but I will do what I can to help. Do you remember the Elixir of Understanding? You gave it to me to help understand other languages? Of course. Do you think it might be possible to make an Elixir that will allow me to understand the languages of plants? Say, for instance, mushrooms? Well, I, I don't know how to make such an elixir, but I did hear that the ancients knew how to make such a potion. Michelle, please help me. Please make contact with the ancients and learn how to make the elixir. I'll need to summon the spirit of a spirit who knows the secret formula. Okay, let's summon them and ask them for help. Well, first, I need to figure out who knew how to make the elixir and... My knowledge of history is rather poor. We need to think of someone from ancient times. Someone who was born after Jesus? Okay, let's think about it. Now I remember. Joan of Arc knew how to talk with plants. Are you sure? Joan of Arc was more of a politician than an alchemist. Oh, every politician is an alchemist at heart. Actually, everyone is an alchemist at heart. And what an impressive person she was. Excellent. Now let's summon her spirit. Okay. Like always, we need to collect the magic cards. Of course.
to collect herbs in order to speak with plants. We'll be able to speak with mushrooms, right? It works on all plants, including mushrooms. Michelle, can we trust this woman with a secret that's been kept for more than 3,000 years? I trust her. She's a good person and she's helped me on numerous occasions. Well, okay then. Let's prepare the elixir. We'll need the following ingredients. The herbs are ready. We just need to make sure that it works. The recipe is ancient, you know. Pour a little on that flower and talk to it. Hey, Buttercup, can you hear us? Ah, yuck! What the heck did you just water me with? Oh, sorry, Buttercup. We just needed to test this magic elixir. Well, don't test anything else on me. That stuff is nasty, and it will probably make me wilt. Okay, we promise we won't. The elixir works! Thank you so much, Joan. And you too, Michelle. I've got to go now. Thank you, and good luck. Goodbye, Vera. I hope it helps your fiancé. She's a really nice girl. Now where did you find her, you old devil? Connecting to Mushroom Age. Vera, you're back. Very brave of you. Uber Mushroom, I have the perfect thing for you. And I'll give it to you as soon as you tell me how to free Tom. You're not as brave as you are rude. You should drink the liquid in this vial. And then, you'll learn that all mushrooms and toadstools around you all think and talk. Did you think I'd be that easy to deal with? It's time to teach you a lesson. And right now.
Uber Mushroom, listen. I'm trying to help you. I mean you no harm. You have super intellectual powers. Why don't you read my mind and learn this for yourself? A foreign mind is filled with darkness. I'll read one thought and you'll have a thousand other thoughts. That's not true. The average person can only think of one thought at a time. How about I remember everyone that I met during my time travels and you just follow my thoughts and then I think you'll understand. Okay, let's try. Okay, now I believe that the elixir you brought can help. Bring it to me. First, tell me how to free Tom. No, I want the elixir first. Okay, here you go. Hi, Uber Mashroom. Who's talking to me? Where are you? It's us, the other mushrooms. But you can't talk. You're just brainless fungi. If you just open your eyes and ears, you'd realize that you're a mushroom just like the rest of us. Wow, and there are so many of you. I don't believe my eyes. There's an entire planet of us. I want to be like you guys. I want to be with you. You're already one of us. You just need to stop thinking that you're an Uber Mashram and be more like us. Okay, I don't want to be an Uber Mashram. Excuse me for interrupting, but you promised to tell me how to free Tom from your hypnosis. What was it that Tom never had during his childhood? Tell her. Oh, right. His mother was allergic to mushrooms, so he ate them as a child. So just feed him some mushrooms, like mushroom soup or something. So I should just feed Tom mushroom soup? That's right. You can even pick some mushrooms from here for your soup. We'll tell you which ones are poisonous and which ones aren't. How can I pick you? I mean, you're all living beings. Don't worry. It's really good luck for a mushroom to be useful to someone else.
There are so many of us. I just can't believe it. Is this how it's going to be from now on? Yes, we're all going to be friends. Okay, Mushroom. I have to go now. Good luck. I wish you fortune and prosperity in your Mushroom civilization. Vera, I should thank you for opening my eyes. Is there anything I can do for you? Just behave yourself. Okay, I will. Feed Tom some soup and he'll be free. Goodbye, Vera. Goodbye, mushrooms. Connecting to happy ending. This outfit makes me look like a noble laureate. I should have left you feeling like a ten-year-old. Then you'd be the first ten-year-old noble laureate. Professor, our guests will start arriving in 30 minutes and you're still in your lab coat. Come on, it's time to get dressed. Tom, I need to talk with you, separately. I don't keep any secrets from my future wife, so you can just tell us. Please forgive me, but I left my suit at home. I'll lend you a different one. No, no, no. You don't understand. Well... Just tell us. I've lost the rings. Who gave Einbach the rings? I took the rings to have a good look at them. And now I've forgotten where I put them. Oh, Professor. I just don't know what to do with you. I didn't do it on purpose. Okay, no reason to get nervous. We just need to find the rings. Look, our rings! Thank God, I was so worried. <coughs> what was that? I think it was a flying saucer. Gretchen! Hi, honey. Were you worried? Good heavens, Gretchen! Is it really you? Of course it's me. Who else would it be? What could all this mean? If you'll allow me to explain, I took this specimen away to study. This planet was known to have intelligent life, and we needed to check. 
I'm now returning the specimen. Would you believe it? This space alien picked me up when I went off canoeing. Right, I've got to go. I've still got 12 more planets on my list. Goodbye. I see more guests arriving. Gretchen, oh my goodness. 20 years. It's been 20 years without you. Well, you know, dear, these space aliens fly at the speed of light. From your point of view, it was 20 years ago, but I've only been gone for about 20 minutes. My head is spinning. Sorry, Gretchen. Dear, what happened? He fainted. Why? From happiness and excitement, 20 years is a long time. Well, try and bring him to.
Professor, your young wife has returned to you. You should be happy and all you do is pass out. But this is so unexpected. Happiness doesn't work on a schedule. Okay, I'm going to go meet the guests. Hey, do you mind if I call my friend? I'm curious if Emma is divorced. Wait! No, don't touch that! Give me that phone! But it's already ringing! Katya! This is only the beginning.